Hi guys, um, today we will be looking at the gas exchange in fish. So you need to be able to describe the structure of fish gills, describe how water is passed along fish gills, explain the difference between parallel flow and countercurrent flow, and explain how countercurrent flow increases the rate of gas, gas exchange. So in terms of the uh, specification, we are here now. So across the gills of fish, okay, including the countercurrent principle and fish, fills, uh, 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 fish gills, lamella and filaments. So this is in short how the uh, how the system looks like. Okay, so we've got the uh, the gills uh, uh, lamella here with lots of filaments on it, and we will be looking at the uh, at the uh, gas exchange. Right. So gas exchange in fish. Okay. Uh, gas of uh, the fish, of course, got gills as an internal gas exchange surface, and they are found between the body of the fish behind the head. So, uh, so uh, they, they are composed of gill filaments, and gill fil uh, gill lamella pro uh, project at right angle from the filaments and serve to increase the surface area. Apart from this, we've got a, a huge um, supply of blood capillaries to increase the surface area and, of course, to provide short diffusion pathway. Right. So what is the adaptation? So, of course, section three, it's all about the large surface area to the volume ratio and small diffusion pathway. So the large surface area in fish is provided by many. Make sure in terms of the past paper questions, you use the word many, lamella and fin epithelium. OK, so it provides a, a short diffusion pathway between water and blood. The fact that water and blood flow in opposite directions, it's really important to maintain concentration gradient. The process of the uh, of this uh, gas exchange, it's, ca uh, it's called countercurrent, which maintains concentration gradient along the whole length of the gill. OK, and circulation is repl uh, replaces blood saturated with oxygen and ventilation replaces water as oxygen is removed. So one more time, this is how it's structured. So we've got uh, we've got here oxygenated blood. OK, we've got deoxygenated blood. So that shows you that the water and blood flow in the opposite direction to maintain the diffusion uh, concentration gradient. OK, so what will happen if they flow at the same direction? So if they flow at the same direction, uh, starting with the higher on one, lower on the other one, as you can see right in the middle, the concentration gradient is not going to be maintained. So that diffusion is not going to be taking place across the whole length of the gill. Instead, fish has a countercurrent flow, which says that the water and blood flow in opposite directions. So as you can see on this picture here, uh, every time the uh, concentra every time the concentration gradient is maintained, so the diffusion of oxygen to the blood of the fish can take place along the whole length of the gill. So we will be looking at the countercurrent principle. Okay, so this is the flow it shows you one more time that the blood and uh, uh, water flow in the opposite directions. Right, so this is how we're starting. Make sure you remember water and blood flow in the opposite directions. Every time uh, the blood with a high saturation of oxygen meets with water, uh, we, we will make sure that the concentration here between the water and blood at those meeting points is different. So the rule is that the water always will have more oxygen than the blood. OK, so we can clearly see this on the picture that uh, that they running in the uh, flow in the opposite directions and the amount of oxygen found in the uh, water. It's always higher than the one in the blood. So diffusion can take place. Right. So maintains the concentration gradient. Fantastic. 
Okay, so it shows you again on the graph as well. You can see it from the graph that the water and blood uh, runs uh, flows, sorry, in opposite directions, and it shows you the saturation with the oxygen along the whole length of the gill. Right, so. Time to make some notes, okay? So come to current system, lower concentration uh, of oxygen, of course, is found in the water than in the air. But in terms of the fish here, there is a higher concentration of oxygen in the water than in the fish gills. So water containing, of course, this oxygen will enter the mouth of the fish and passes through the gills. So each of those gills is uh, made of many uh, filaments to provide a large surface area. Those filaments are covered with tiny structures called lamella, which further increases the surface area. Lamella have lots of blood capillaries and uh, a thin surface uh, layer of one cell to speed up diffusion. And finally, blood flows through the lamella in one direction and the water flows in opposite direction. So this is all called a countercurrent system. So if anyone will ask you to describe and explain how the countercurrent system leads to a efficient gas exchange across the gills of a fish, you must remember the key words here. So first marking point, easy that the water and blood flow in opposite directions. So what? Why is it important? Okay, so this maintains the concentration gradient. Okay, the fact that uh, uh, oxygen in the blood is always lower than in the water. So this diffusion can take place for the whole length of the gill. So make sure you say a whole length because without this, you are not getting max. Okay. Another thing which is really important is the fact that countercurrent mechanism in fish gills make sure that the maximum amount of oxygen passes into the blood flowing through the gills. So why and how? So water and blood, as we know, flow in opposite directions. Blood passing uh, always water and we make sure that water has a high concentration of oxygen. So diffusion gradient is maintained. Diffusion occurs through the whole length of the gills. So this aspect comes up again. And if water and blood flow in the same directions, of course, this uh, concentration gradient would not be reached. Right? So here to summarize, we've got uh, we've got two pictures of the countercurrent flow and parallel flow. So as you can see, in countercurrent flow, it's much more efficient because it, it, it maintains this diffusion gradient for the whole length of the gill, while the diffusion gradient is only maintained for the half of the distance across the gill lamella for the parallel flow. OK, so that's the main adaptation. Make sure you know it. Right. So that's everything for the fish. Thank you.